hello. <laughs> so it's been a while since I've done this. Also, I just want to put as a side note, I filmed this whole thing and I used this microphone and apparently it didn't pick up any audio whatsoever. So I was just mute talking nothing. So I'm just going to pretend this works. I already unplugged it so you guys can hear me, but I just want everyone to know that I tried. This is a second take. <laughs> So, it has been a while since I've seen you all. I think it's been two years since I fully uploaded a video. I think the last thing I did was play me play, I think. So, that was fun. <laughs> so, but a lot, a lot of big things have happened in my life, such as I got myself a boy. Not like a kid, like a boyfriend. Uh, and we're going pretty good for like a year in almost six months because I think our anniversary is on the 14th so Valentine's Day will be perfect for that <laughs> and then we just moved into a new house I know this isn't the house that I this is not anywhere close to what my room used to look like but it does now and um, yeah we're trying to move again so what fun and then also I had a job, I quit it, and then got a different job, and I got a promotion in like three months. And now I'm full time. So, <laughs> so that's pretty good with me. I'm doing great. Uh, I'm still doing cosplay stuff. I just organized it yesterday, and I felt good about myself. So I was like, hey, while I go through memories, uh, why don't I just upload another video? I've always, I wanted to do it for a while, and I was talking to my boy about it. He's like, yeah, sure, go for it. So, I, but I didn't know what to do, since I know my video game content's not that great, and I really wanted to try doing a commentary, but I've never done it before. So I was like, you know what, I, cause I'm gonna just take inspiration from Danny Gonzalez and like Drew Gooden and those people. They tend to go, f like, watch and react to stuff and show it off to their audience when they're like, hey, this is really interesting. So, I'm gonna do the same thing. <laughs> So what better to do, like, a video about a hyperfixation that I've been obsessing over for a year now, which has been total drama. <laughs> yeah, that kid's show that everyone grew up with on Cartoon Network, I'm still obsessed with it to this day, and it's pretty cool. Now, if you're not... If you weren't born in, like, the early 2000s, you might not know what I'm talking about. It was a show called Total Drama Island. It premiered, I believe, on the 7th in Canada, and, the, and, and then the 2008 in America, I believe. But it featured 24 teenagers competing for $100,000. And then later on, when they do the like sequels, they change it to a $1 million. dollars. And it's and it's been pretty successful. It, sparked, it was grown in popularity so much that it sparked action, world tour... Revenge of the Island, All Stars, which is kind of iffy, and Pakatu Island. And then it had a spinoff called The Redonkulous Race, which is awesome, and I wish they had a second season of. And then they had a baby spinoff called Total Drama Rama, which was okay. It was a solid thumb sideways. But we're not here to talk about all the sequels and the good shit. We're here to talk about the original island, because I've always wanted to analyze this show. Like, I remember, like... When this show was premiering, I would go to my friends who watched it, and we would treat it like a what's the like a reality TV, like a real reality TV show. We would discuss who our favorites were and who we thought was going to win. No one in my group thought Owen would win, and so that was fun. And so now that Mini Me finally has grown up and has more brain capacity. I decided I want to analyze this show, but I didn't know what to analyze. And after talking to some of my online friends that are in the Total Drama community and some of the fan communities and everything, I decided I want to analyze and see who is the strongest contestant and who was the weakest contestant. I find the power scaling in this universe kind of funny because, like, they're all supposed to be 16, like, normal 16 year olds that just want to win money. And some of them do some insane shit to <laughs> to win. So I, I just want to analyze and see, like, who is the strongest person in the Total Drama cast? 
Well, I'll be just be looking at season one if this video does do good. Uh. Sorry. <laughs> if this video does do good, I would watch the other ones, like Action, World Tour, and then all the other ones as well, and rank them all. But I knew this task would be daunting, since there are 24 contestants and so much to keep track of. So I asked help from one of my online friends. Her name is Kenzie. She is awesome. And I will have her YouTube channel and I think her Instagram down in the description if you guys want to go check her out. But she was a big help with this project. So what we decided was is that each of us will be in charge of looking at a team. I will be in charge of looking at the bass and then she will be in charge of looking at the gophers. And we'll at the end of each episode, whoever gets eliminated, we will rank them from there. I believe they will. their ranking might change from there. Because at the the final, all the contestants come back to share on the finalists, and then you have like the Palo de Losers where you get to see them all again. So their ranking might go up and down depending on what happens in like at like after elimination. So, uh, quick side note: we are not going to analyze Chris and Chef. We have their own little ranking of just like not like NA. We're not even going to touch that. But if I if we had to, <laughs> uh, I think Chris would be a five, like average, and then maybe Chef would be like a six or like a seven, which that leads us to the rankings of how we're going to decide the like strength in this thing. So we decided that zero would be like you couldn't even lift a stick. It would kind of be similar to. Cameron in season four when he's in the confessional booth and a little butterfly like lands on his head and it's so heavy that he falls over. That would be like a zero on the weakness sale. Five would be like pretty average 16 year old. All right. Pretty average. And a 10 would be like you weren't even born on earth. <laughs> it would kind of be like this would be a spoiler later on. But the first thing I thought of that would be a 10 was in one episode, Eva is kills Bigfoot. I forgot what they actually call him in the series, but I, it's Bigfoot. And she kills him and wears his skin. So that would be a 10 for me. And also on a scale of 10 of fright for my life after that. But <laughs> nonetheless, that's what we're going to do the rankings of. So I hope you guys enjoy that. Disclaimer, this will be a spoiler for all of season one and some of the other seasons as well, just like little snippets of what they do. So I I highly recommend checking it out, checking out the series. It's available on Netflix if you have it. But if you don't have any streaming services, just fucking steal it from YouTube. They have, like, some channel has, like, all of them. Like, all seven seasons, including The Ridiculous Rays and Total Dr Drama Rama. So I totally recommend that. And I thought I had another disclaimer. Oh, yeah, I did. So I started editing some of the stuff, some of the segments, and um, the video editing software that I'm using is actually pretty good, but they <laughs> have this big-ass watermark that's going to be on this section of the video as well when I edit. So it's like, probably like this, like the whole thing, uh, like that big. Uh, you can sort of see through it, but I didn't realize how bad that watermark was going to be. Um, so if you guys have any recommendations of video editors to use that are either cheap or free that I don't mind a watermark, just like something in the corner, like nothing so distracting. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoy this. So I'm so before we actually dive into the season, me and Kenzie wanted to see like who we really thought would be the strongest based off of our memories of season one. So here is that. <laughs> And I hope you guys enjoy some of the rest. We're gonna, before we go through the whole season and see who actually is the strongest, we're just gonna do a quick estimate to see who we think personally, like based off of our memory. So yes. I'm here with Kenzie right now. Hello. Uh, Kenzie, would you I'm like so to? Happy to be here. Kenzie, would you like to um, what was it um? Say a quick few words or like shout out anything before we start. Um, yes. So, 
So shout out to my to my buddy me H, aka my aka Mikey, who is uh, who is what up? Who's been who I've known for quite a while in the total drama community. So if you are watching this video, dude, shout out to you. Also, shout out to my buddy to my buddy Barkin as well, aka aka Lisa Queen Bleak at the Bleak, who's also a big total drama fan as well. I love you both so much, and I really hope you enjoy this video. Now, back to you. Alrighty, I we're not gonna put Chef or Chris in here, but uh, so we just made like a separate thing for him for them to just to chill. But I guess we'll start with Beth since she's right here. Um, I don't know about Beth. She's kind of not that strong. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, she's pretty weak. She's yeah. pretty weak, to be honest. So. Oh, by the way, we we sectioned this out by 5 being, like, average, 0 being you can't even lift a stick, to, like, 10 being you can pick out a whole tree out of the ground, so yep. that's our power scaling, <laughs> so it'll be yep. 0 to 10. So maybe she'll be, like, I feel like she can do it, like, she's a little bit below average, so maybe, like, a 4. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I would say she's probably a 4. I think that's where she belongs. Yeah. Alright, Bridget's next. Where do you think Bridget um. would go? To be fair, she's pretty weak. She's pretty weak, in my opinion. Honestly. Yeah. I'm trying to think of anything like, that she, she like did. Sucks at, she's like, sucks at, at the physical challenges. Yeah. Yeah, I can't remember any physical challenge that she took part in. <laughs> so maybe, like, maybe like a five. Yeah, probably. She has some athleticism to her, so... That yeah, that is true though. That is true. That Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, okay, we'll go for a five. Alright, Cody's next. Cody's like Cody. I mean, he did survive a bear attack, so maybe That is true. <laughs> that is true though. And he like healed for like really fast for someone that got attacked by a bear. <laughs> that yeah. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't know where to put him. Maybe with Beth, maybe it's like an app, like a three or like yeah. a like a high four. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe, maybe like right here. <laughs> All right, DJ. Um. Maybe like a seven. I'm feeling a seven. Yeah. What do you think? I'm actually feel. I'm actually feeling a seven too. To be fair. Yeah. I mean, Regardless of how much of a softy he is. <laughs> yeah, the the first thing I thought of was in that the horse movie thing where they had to live as a horror movie. He like broke through a door by running yes. into it. Oh my gosh! Yeah, <laughs> left his whole ass like figure. <laughs> right. <laughs> so man, it's pretty strong. He just chooses yeah, not to use yeah, the strength. Yeah, is. Eva definitely a ten. Yeah, she's she's absolutely a ten. She can literally like. like on a different level. <laughs> she really is. She can like, she can like lift a whole freaking tree and and like chuck it somewhere if she could. Bro, she could like chuck it all the way to another country. <laughs> she literally could. Yeah, exactly. All right, Ezekiel. I'm I'm feeling like season one Ezekiel. He's probably a two. To be honest with you. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. He ain't got no skills. <laughs> yeah, he's got like nothing. <laughs> All right, uh, Jeff is next. I'm trying to think. He did have that scene where he like threw a big fit about having a splinter and acted like he was dying. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> Pretty wimpy. Yeah. Pretty wimpy on that. <laughs> so maybe, maybe like Bridget, like. He's yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, I would say. Yeah, I would agree. All right, uh, Harold. He's got to be a six. Like he's a little bit above average with the amount of skills that he has. Oh yeah. Uh, oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely agree with that on that one. Yeah, because it's not just about strength; it's about endurance and abilities. And Harold yes. has a shit ton of abilities. <laughs> he really does. <laughs> All right. So yeah, I would agree. I would say six. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, Heather. Where would you put Heather? Um, ooh, ooh. That's a good one. Ooh, that's a good question, actually. I would say in terms of abilities, she's pretty freaking strong. In terms of strength, though... I'm trying to think of huh. any physical challenges that she did. Yeah. Maybe like maybe a six would be generous, or maybe yeah. she's like at maybe a six. Yeah. Yeah. Just a little I would bit below hair rolls on that one. Now Izzy, yeah. I'm feeling a nine on Izzy. Yeah, definitely a nine. I mean, this girl. I mean, she blew up the. She tried to blew up the whole flipping island. I mean, how could she not be that high? Yeah. All right, Justin. I mean, he does have abs, so he does work out and lift to get abs True. and stuff. And he also has the ability to just, like, hypnotize any girl plus Owen. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, that is true. <laughs> that is true. So maybe, like, a seven. Yeah, yeah. I would say a seven. Alright, right here. Uh, Katie, I'm feeling, uh, I'm feeling a two. Yeah, she's pretty weak. <laughs> yeah. For, for, she's a little bit of a... Uh, Ezekiel. Uh, Lindsay. Yeah. Um, not the brightest, but... Yeah, definitely not. <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe, a, like, a below average. Yeah, I uh, would say below average. I'll put her next to Beth. Okay. Now, I don't want to rank the coconut. <laughs> yeah, because the but coconut... But I think it'd be funny really if you rank the coconut. <laughs> <laughs> It's a two. I give it a two. Yeah, give it a two. Solid he, two. He bonked the snake. Yep, that's that is true though. Yeah, he did that. <laughs> that's something at least, for a co especially for a coconut. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's better than what Ezekiel did. <laughs> right. Which was nothing. <laughs> All right, Noah. He's very smart, but he's not very he athletic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so maybe like. Maybe a three. Because yeah. he doesn't really shine until, like, World Tour. Yeah. So for this that season, is... he's like a three. <sighs> what about Owen, though? Hmm. Hmm. The one scene that I do remember was the hide and seek one, where he's, like, lifting himself onto the roof, and it's confirmed yeah. that he's, like, almost 300 pounds. So that's mm -hmm. kind of impressive that he's able to do that. <laughs> yeah, that is. <laughs> that actually is pretty impressive. Yeah, to like lift your own body weight like high up right? and going against gravity and shit. Right? <laughs> so so maybe like, maybe like, maybe a six. Yeah. Yeah. I would say probably a six. I'm feeling that Sadie's next to Katie. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. They're both like, they, like they didn't a bunch really of do weeklies. anything. But, they they did like nothing. Yeah, I mean they barely talk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Courtney. She goes a bit crazy towards the end of the season, so I'm feeling an that eight. That is true. I'm feeling an eight too, actually. Yeah. She's pretty freaking. She's like she's pretty freaking cutthroat, so that that makes sense. All right, Duncan. Yeah. Where do we put Duncan? <laughs> ooh, ooh. That man's pretty ooh. fucking strong. <laughs> He, he actually he really is. I mean, <laughs> when I was thinking I mean, about making this video, the first thing I thought of was the scene in action where he like takes a whale and breaks its back. Right. <laughs> so I was like, holy shit, man. So I'm getting, I'm guessing right? like at least a nine. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe like a little bit below Izzy. I feel like Eve is definitely yeah. the strongest contestant they've ever had. Yes, definitely. Gwen, I'm feeling that she's average. She doesn't do a lot of physical things, and she doesn't have yeah. a lot of abilities. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah. I would agree on average. Mm -hmm. Uh, Lashana, I'm feeling a seven. Seven, definitely seven. <laughs> yeah. Maybe like right, like right above Justin, but a little bit below DJ. Yeah. Trent, um, I'm feeling a four. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> Yeah, so a little bit, a little bit above Cody. Oh, and the last one's Tyler. Tyler's an athlete, but he's not really athletic. <laughs> that right? 
<laughs> He's not athletic at all. He like sucks at. He he like sucks so bad at physical challenges. <laughs> Dude's like the- Even in his show, he like freaking fell and just tripped over. Well, shit. He's like, you know that stereotype in movies where you have like the clumsy girl and everything? He's, right. He's like the, the clumsy athlete. Yeah, exa exactly. I'm, I'm feeling- Exactly. I'm feeling like maybe here. Well, no, no. Yeah. We're probably like above Katie and Sadie, so. Yeah. I would oh, agree. Well, let me- Let me put it over here. There we go. All right. <laughs> I, f I feel like this is some pretty good predictions. Yeah. Who knows? I maybe, would agree. maybe Bridget, Jeff, and Gwen will surprise us. Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> oh, shit. You know what I just remembered? Lindsay built a whole ass bike. <laughs> oh, yeah. Took, a, took apart a motorcycle. Remember. So maybe a five. She's a little smart. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So this okay. is our prediction so far. So we'll see. I'll take a. I'll save this and then we'll look at it when we're done with the whole okay. season to see if we're close. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> Alrighty. Is there anything last we want to say before we jump to the next section of us watching the, the, sh the show? It won't be tonight, but it'll be like the next section for the people of watching. <laughs> oh. So... So, if you guys... So, any of you watching who are new to my channel, Make sure to make sure to su make sure to subscribe to me if you want to see more of my videos. Also subscribe. Also subscribe to my buddy to my buddies Lisa Queen, Link the Blink the Blink, and me me H as well. If you want to see their content, and I will see you guys next time. Alrighty, alright. So. The first episode I thought wouldn't have a lot of content to work with because it is the first episode. It's It was mainly the pilot, hoping that it would just continue from there. So it was basically introducing each character in its respective, pushing them aside, and then introducing a new character. Getting them used to the environment, introducing Chef Hatchet, Chris McLean, and their new environment and what they're going to be doing and dealing with for, what do they say, like eight weeks? Like until the end of summer? So, what I thought wouldn't have a lot of content, did. <laughs> so, so for the teams, the Team Killer Bass would have Harold, Jeff, Bridget, Sadie, Izzy, Courtney, Duncan, Eva, Tyler, DJ, and Ezekiel. I'm pretty sure I spelled Ezekiel wrong in my script multiple times, but it's okay. He's not going to last any much longer. And then for the Screaming Gophers, you have Gwen, Owen, Heather, Beth, Lindsay, Justin, Noah, Trent, Cody, and Katie. And, and just so you know, when I list the actions that these characters have done, I'm going to, which side is this side? <laughs> I'm going to put a little number in, like, up here in this corner for you guys to see how we would rank the action and why we put it in there. So let's get started with the Killer Bass. Um... So, uh, it was Jeff doing a handstand and a backspring off a boat. Tyler surviving getting flung 50 feet into luggage. I believe it was 50 feet. Bridget hitting Chris with a surfboard. Bridget and DJ holding Lashana back from killing Harold. Eva easily carrying dumbbells in her bag. Corny pulling Izzy out of the water. Duncan catching a deer and giving it a nuggie. Eva lifting weights in both hands, and then Duncan slicing a cockroach with an axe for the killer bass team. Then for the screaming gophers, you have Owen breaking Chris's back with a hug, Justin being able to hypnotize any girl plus Owen, Izzy hitting her chin on the dock and being completely fine, Gwen throwing Cody out of the girl's cabin, and that was that was it for this episode. Since there is no eliminations, we will not be doing a ranking until the next episode, which is right now. Alright, so the second episode starts off with all the contestants in their bathing suits up on a cliff. And their challenge is to jump a thousand feet into the water in a little circle. And then whoever actually lands in there the most gets a cart that they can use. Or carrying crates that they will use to build a hot tub. And that's the final challenge is to build a hot tub. And have like the best looking hot tub. So 
Everyone jumps except for Courtney, DJ, and Beth. And then at this point, this is where Izzy swaps teens with Katie. So Izzy is now on the Screaming Gophers, and Katie is now on the the Killer Bass. So if you were confused a little bit before why we put Izzy with the Screaming Gophers, it's why she doesn't really stay long for the Bass. So there was no point of just being like, this is theirs, and then, oh, this is now theirs. So let's see... Oh yeah, the Bass end up sending Ezekiel home this episode for being sexist. And but to be honest with you, if he didn't say anything, it would have been corny. <laughs> All right, so a lot of key moments in this one. Uh, the Bass had Tyler hit a floating dumbbell, jumping a thousand feet. Ezekiel hitting a rock halfway down his fall. Harold can no longer have children. Eva and Tyler can both pick up their crates by themselves. Katie and Sadie push their crates. Both Harold and Ezekiel picked up theirs. Harold gets hit by a hammer and bonked twice by a plank. And then Eva strangled Ezekiel. Alright, and then for the Screaming Gophers, uh, it was Lashana throwing Heather off a cliff. Justin hypnotizing two sharks. Owen causing a tidal wave. And then Izzy opening up a crate with her mouth. And here is the ranking for that episode for Ezekiel. Based off of Zeke's performance that I've written down, he did lift a crate full of supplies. Mm -hmm. He got strangled. And yep. he uh, he hit a rock falling 100 feet. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so I, I'm thinking a three. Yeah, I'm thinking a three, too. Yeah. Alrighty. He's still pretty weak, but... It might go up when when we go to like the the ending and the whole Paladay losers, but that's where yeah. it is right now. Episode three challenge starts off with the teams running a, I believe they call it a twenty kilometer run. It's mainly just a run around around the island, and then after they're done, they have a buffet, and then Chris reveals that the challenge is to stay awake. So all this was supposed to make them tired. Uh, some people fall asleep early, like Owen does, and then. It ends up being down to Duncan and Gwen, but Gwen ends up winning because Duncan falls asleep on the toilet. And Team Bass lose, and they vote out Eva because she, after the challenge, she went on a rampage trying to find her MP3 player and, like, destroy their cabin. So a lot of the, the Killer Bass's key moments in this are from Eva because this is, like, Eva's moment, maybe because she gets eliminated here, but... You have her almost biting Cody, breaking the bathroom lock, throwing her suitcase out the window. She's only been here one day, and she's already thrown her suitcase out a window and broken the lock on one of the bathroom doors. Didn't get out of breath while running, and same thing with Bridget. Threw a mattress and canoe out the window, almost breaking Chris's leg, and chucking a pointy stick at Courtney's head. Some other moments are Duncan and Jeff holding Eva back. Harold having a heart attack because he ran, DJ taking down a whole tree by sleeping, and Duncan and Eva staying awake for five days straight. Now that takes some endurance, so I'm pretty impressed, because I believe if you stay up for three days straight, you will start to hallucinate, and I believe that does happen to Tyler, <laughs> so I, I see why he didn't win that challenge, but nonetheless. All right. Screaming Gophers, we have Owen and Lashana both getting out of breath easily. Noah, Justin, and Beth keeping a good pace alongside Eva and Bridget. Noah passing out from exhaustion. Owen falling asleep after 12 hours. Beth and Lizzie doing a handstand. Owen falling off a cliff. Owen swimming a up a waterfall while asleep. Trent, Gwen, and Heather staying away for five days straight. And Gwen winning the challenge, which is, like, the longest period. So, pretty good endurance from her side. Um, here is Eva's ranking for that episode. Eva, let me look at my notes. I'm, I'm thinking a 10. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. She's so, strong as hell. Like, she threw a freaking whole, she threw a whole flipping canoe. Like, yeah, so she, holy shit. She had dumbbells in her bag that she easily carried she was lifting yeah. weights um she <laughs> strangled ezekiel yeah uh, lifted a whole crate by herself almost bit yeah. cody's arm off um yeah broke the bathroom lock and threw her suitcase out the window 
threw yep. a mattress and canoe and then almost broke Chris's leg and chucked a stick at Courtney's head. I'm feeling a 10. <laughs> yeah, definitely a 10. And that's, I feel like after, like, <laughs> when she comes back, we're gonna have to add a new, a new rank above this. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> All right. Hi, I changed spots for this. <laughs> Sorry, I had a good work and I couldn't record the rest, so I was editing. Anyway. <laughs> So, episode four is a very physical challenge. It is the dodgeball episode. Each team has to win three games in order to win the entire challenge, and then whoever doesn't has to vote someone off. For the most part, the Gophers were ahead for this challenge. They were winning 0-2 to two until they woke up Duncan. They won the first, the last two, and then, um, and then Harold came in and saved the day. So... After that, they end up winning, and then Noah gets voted out because of his lack of team spirit and team participation. Now, originally, as I was doing before, I would section it off by what the Bass did and then what the Gophers did. But unfortunately, there are so many moments for both sides that it would just be easier to just do it all in one go. Because a lot of them do interact because if you hit someone, they get hit. So it goes both ways. So, um, there's a lot. <laughs> Starting off at the beginning of the episode, we have Duncan making one threat, making everyone take cover. Courtney flinging oatmeal at Gwen. Courtney getting hit in the stomach by a, a ball. Lindsay getting hit in the face. Sadie getting hit in the face by Tyler. Owen hitting Tyler so hard he flies backwards. Harold not being able to throw a ball. Harold getting flown backwards by Lashana. Katie hitting Lindsay in the face, Heather hitting Tyler in the stomach, Owen catching a ball with one hand, DJ hitting Gwen in the, in the face, Cody hitting DJ and Katie using static electricity and a boomerang ball, Tyler hitting Lindsay in the face, Owen taking out the opposite team in five seconds, Duncan breaking a stick, Owen getting knocked out by four balls, Heather throwing a canoe at Tyler, Noah getting hit in the face, Gwen hitting Courtney, Duncan getting knocked out by three balls, Cody getting hit in the balls, <laughs> Gwen and DJ knocking each other out, Harold knocking Owen's fastballs using his figure skating lessons, Harold catching one of Owen's fastballs, and Noah getting hurt by marshmallows. And since Noah did get eliminated this episode, he will be ranked here. Alright, so for Noah, where did I hit Noah? Yeah. What would he be? Hmm. Um, like a two or three, probably? Yeah, I think like a three. He did get hurt by marshmallows. Yeah. So not, not the... not the strongest. Yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely not. <laughs> Alrighty! So, okay, I swear this will be the last segment I'm changing locations and like changing clothes, I promise. So, episode five is the talent show competition. Each team must pick three people to represent their team for the talent show, and whoever wins, wins immunity, and then someone else has to send someone home. The challenge mainly takes a backseat here, and we get to see the contestants interacting with each other and what they do around the camp normally, and you get a little bit of Gwen and Trent development along with Heather scheming. Not a lot happens for the Bass, like plot-wise, but we do learn that Harold is a beatboxer. So I guess that was pretty cool. And they did do horribly until Harold did do the beatboxing. So, yeah. And then Justin ends up getting eliminated because Heather manipulated the votes to get five against Justin. So there wasn't a lot to say about this episode. There were a few moments that were worth noting for the Bass. Sadie being able to do a split. DJ doing a split and doing a ribbon sport. Bridget can do a handstand for 20 minutes. Jeff can skateboard well. Courtney being able to play the violin. Courtney surviving a light falling on her head. Jeff breaking his skateboard, trying to land on it. And Harold having a big lug capacity to beatbox. So for the Gophers, we have Cody falling between the bleachers. Heather being able to do ballet. Izzy being able to hypnotize Owen through dance. Beth being able to throw fire sticks but not being able to catch them. Trent being able to play the guitar. 
Lindsay having martial arts training, and Heather getting bitten by red fire ants. And then since Justin got eliminated this episode, he'll be ranked right here. So it's Justin. Where are we feeling that Justin is? I don't even know, to be honest. <laughs> he doesn't have like... the ability to just hypnotize anyone with his looks. That is true. That is true. Um, maybe a six? Yeah, that's what I'm feeling. <laughs> Alright, right there. Alright, episode 6 is a survival challenge. Each team must go venture into the woods, find their camp, and then survive there for the night, and then report back first thing in the morning to win immunity for their team. Um, both teams kind of have a horrible time, mainly the gophers, with having two bear attacks in one night, one being Izzy and the other one being an actual bear, and then Bridget burnt down the tent for the bass team, so they had to sleep in the rain. Um, the bass almost end up winning, but because Katie and Sadie got separated, they they end up losing the challenge, and the gophers win, like, a, a tuck shop, which is, like, getting free food and such, like, good free food. So, Katie gets eliminated because of that, and Sadie gets to stay, unfortunately. <laughs> so, this didn't have a lot of moments for the bass. Um, what I got was... DJ being able to catch a bunny and Duncan stabbing himself in the neck with a hook. That's literally all that happens for the bass. As for the gophers, it's more focus of Owen, I found out when I was writing this. Owen catches three fish. Izzy leaves a bite mark in a fish. Owen gets bitten by a shark in his butt before the show. Owen knows how to descale and cook fish. Heather being able to trip Owen with one foot. Everyone being able to climb a tree. Owen hitting his head on a tree three times. Lashana falling out of a tree with a little injury. Izzy being able to disguise and imitate a bear. Owen ripping fur off a bear. And Heather pushing Owen to the ground. Since Katie did get eliminated this episode, she'll be listed right here. Alright, All right. let me look so at now my... We I think have I wrote one Katie. thing down for Katie. <laughs> 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 but I think it was like Katie and Sadie. Yeah, they, they both pushed the crate together, and Katie yeah. was like a, a go to dodgeball. <laughs> that is true, though. That is true. So, I'm, I'm guessing she's at least average. Yeah, I would say average. Yeah. <laughs> episode 7 starts off where the last episode ended. Sadie is crying by the pier, wishing that Katie was still there. And all the teams get together, and they all reveal their worst fears to each other. And Chris ends up using this as material for the next challenge the next morning, where they all have to face their fear in order to get a point for their team to win. Um, the Gophers crushed this challenge. All, only three people on the Bass did their challenge, and the ones that didn't were Tyler, Courtney, Jeff, and Bridget. Tyler ends up getting voted off because he didn't do his challenge, and they did him so dirty in this episode. Um, what I thought would be a phys like a lot of physical challenge in this didn't really have a lot, I guess, for the bass at that point. But some things to note. It was Bridget pulling Sadie up while Sadie takes a attached plank off the dock. Harold knocking himself out with nunchucks. Bridget kicking a chipmunk from the woods to the beach. Jeffers surviving hail the size of golf balls. And Courtney slapping herself in the face. And then for the Gophers, there was two moments that were the only ones that stuck out for the episode. And it was Heather tripping a sumo wrestler with her body and Cody sending off a trash bomb. And then here is the ranking for Tyler for that episode. Let's see, for Tyler, let me look at my notes. So, um, he survived getting flung 50 feet into luggage. Um, yeah. He hit a dumbbell jumping a thousand feet and survived. <laughs> He picked yeah. up a whole crate by himself. Let's see. Nothing for three. <laughs> uh, for... Oh yeah, dodgeball. He got flattened like a pancake. Yeah, he did. He and definitely he got, did. He the balls by a ball. <laughs> mm -hmm. I just put can't yo-yo. I guess that... <laughs> that counts. Right. All right. I'm, I'm guessing a four. <laughs> Yeah, definitely a four. There we go. Alright, episode eight starts off with Chris explaining the challenge for that morning. It's basically canoeing to Boney Island, hiking through the island, setting up a rescue fire that would be judged by Chris, 
and then rushing back to the main island to win immunity for their team. Um, he also says that if you take anything off, you will be cursed forever, but everyone hears this except for Beth. She was in the bathroom. So everyone partners up, goes through, they hike through, encountering very dangerous animals that are native to Boney Island, and then DJ ends up winning for the bass by carrying everyone in a canoe back to shore by swimming. And Izzy gets eliminated this episode because she told them that they should do that, basically giving them the win. And But it's not confirmed who actually would have got eliminated. It seemed like it was going to be either Lindsay or Izzy, but Izzy gets chased down by the RCMP for her past crimes. <laughs> so for the bass... It was DJ having surgery to remove swim trunks from his butt before the show. The whole team lifting their canoes. Jeff not being able to walk after getting a splinter. Bridget having first aid training. And DJ pushing three canoes and his whole team while swimming at full speed. A lot of the gophers moments in this episode do come from Izzy, but we're still going to be doing it in order. The moments considered the following. When putting Cody in a hold. Cody not being able to pull a canoe, Gwen hitting Cody in the balls without looking, Izzy claiming she knows how to catch and cook crocodile and koala, the whole team lifting their canoes, Cody flinging himself into a tree, Trent pulling himself and Lindsay out of quicksand, Izzy making a fire starter with just sand and tree sap, Izzy claiming that she trained with the reserves and blew up the kitchen and is now on the run, Izzy claiming that she pushed a 60-foot yacht back to shore, Izzy claiming that she owns a license to kill anyone, and Izzy being chased by the RCMP into the woods. Here's Izzy ranking. It will most likely go up when she comes back, but here's what we think now based on her performance. Yeah, we're putting Izzy. I would actually rank her pretty high, to be honest. Yeah, she did a lot of shit. She oh, she really she did. blew up a whole aisle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so a little bit below Eva. Yeah, I would say definitely, like, below Eva, for sure. All right, episode nine. This will be the final episode that we'll be covering for this part. So, yeah, deal with it. We'll cover the rest later. <laughs> I'm tired, and I have to go to work in 15 minutes, so. Alrighty. So, episode nine is the deer hunting episode. Each team is... The teams are then divided into hunters and deers. Deers get a head start while the hunters have to hunt the other team's deer. Um, this is where Heather's alliance kind of gets rough and Beth decides to break away from it. This is also where Cody gets mauled by a bear. What a fun episode. <laughs> the bass end up winning because none of their deer got shot and the gophers are covered in both gopher paint and bass paint. So they end up winning by a landslide. And then they send Cody home which I thought was the weirdest thing. I understand how they explained it was because he's now useless in challenges because he is in a wheelchair and bandaged up and you can't really speak. But Heather should have gone home <laughs> for real. So here are a few moments. Nothing really stuck out for the bass because it wasn't much of a physical challenge. It's kind of just shooting people with paint. So it's kind of like playing like... Uh, Airsoft guns, it's kind of like that, except with paint. So, the bass did have a few, just mainly from DJ, from him having the ability to turn into a deer, DJ parkouring across a river, DJ throwing Owen over a cliff, and Courtney kicking Duncan in the crotch. <laughs> the gophers had Trent catching a can with one hand, Cody, Lindsay, and Heather catching their cans, Owen getting knocked out, Owen missing a jump. Owen climbing and falling out of a tree, Cody getting mauled by a bear, and Cody drowning in the lake while in a wheelchair and cannot swim. So here is Cody's ranking for that episode. All right, Cody. Where are we putting Cody? Um, hmm. Probably a two or three, I would say. I, I'm kind of feeling a four. Oh, really? Yeah, he was very, he did pretty good in the dodgeball challenge. Hmm, hmm, that's true though. That's true, though. Hmm. All right, we'll say it for. Okay. Alrighty, I think that's going to do it for this episode. Um, this will be a multi-part series where we do go through the entirety of Island, so this is just part one. 
part two and three will come out eventually. Hopefully I'll get the parts recorded on Wednesday for part two, but who knows? <laughs> so I like to thank you guys for watching this. It is my first time coming back in like almost two years, so I really appreciate it. And if you're new to my channel, I would really like it if you would leave a like and maybe comment and subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you can get aware when I post the the series. I'd also like to thank Kenzie for helping me with this project and going to help me for the other two parts as well. I appreciate you. Her channel will once again be in the description down below along with the people that she shouted out. Also my Instagram and some of my other socials will be down there as well if you want to check that out. I do want to start posting other videos. Um, I don't mind doing total drama because it's really cool, but like I have other stuff that I do like um I'm really into cosplaying, so I could show you guys some of my costumes that I do. Um, I'm into collecting Vizipop merch, so I could review that and show off my collection. I also really want to review this fanfiction that I keep rereading on Wattpad. That is a total drama fanfiction about Duncan, because uh, <laughs> he is my favorite character. Unfortunately, it it's mainly the green hair, but <laughs> yeah... It, yeah, I don't mind doing that, but I would just appreciate- if you guys have any, like, suggestions of what I should cover next after I finish doing, like, this series, let me know. I'm curious to see. So, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time. Take care. <laughs>